the war on the family extends into the media, uh, mostly through fear-based campaigns that are trying to manipulate votes on both sides. Uh, I'm not going to pretend like this is a one-sided issue. This is definitely, both sides are trying to use fear to manipulate the masses, uh, trying to use fear to perpetuate stereotypes and uh, continue hatred and race wars. And this is happening on both sides of the media. Absolutely. There is a war on cops. There is a war on black people. There is a war on white people. There is a war on white males. There is a war on females like we just talked about. There's The enemy is going after everyone and the enemy is trying to keep us divided. The enemy is trying to keep us from seeing each other as souls, as seeing each other as creations of God. The other thing that gets put out there is that if there was more acceptance of the homosexual culture, that depression and the rates of suicide would go down because I don't know if you know, but suicide rates in the homosexual community are astronomically high. And this is heartbreaking to me. This is heartbreaking to me. And that has a spiritual explanation too, because if you will be honest and say, if homosexuality is a sin, then you can start to see this clearly and you realize that the reason why suicide rates are so high in the homosexual community is because Satan is trying to trap them in their sin. Once they go down this homosexual lifestyle, once he gets them trapped in that, then his next goal is to kill them so he can take them to hell for eternity. So this is a big deal. And we look at cultures where homosexuality is accepted, completely accepted, the norm, celebrated not only accepted but celebrated and the suicide rates are not any lower so it doesn't have to do with societal pressure it does not have to do with the stigma it's because it's spiritual it's because it's a spiritual thing that has been let in by either a generational curse people who believe they're born homosexual or more likely than not under a generational curse but I myself the Lord showed me I let in my first demon by celebrating Halloween and I dressed up as a pirate I got real into that character and guess what as a three-year-old that allowed a demon to take some possession in me I'm not saying I was full-blown possessed but I am saying that I gave up a little bit of my spirit that day and I was from there on forward a little bit darker because of that until I eventually got delivered from it when Jesus Christ saved me and delivered me from everything that's a story for another time, but God absolutely showed me that. He absolutely showed me that. So, when I am addressing the issue of homosexuality, it's because I'm worried about the souls. I am really worried about the souls. And people are gonna think, oh, this is a political move, but it's not, because it is a choice. And where the church has dropped the ball is that people are being set free from homosexuality all the time by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will give them a new heart with new desires when they come to him and fully surrender to him and lay down their life and follow him and, and battle it out like we all have to do with any sin. Jesus will absolutely bring them a new heart with new desires. And the church has dropped the ball. Every other sin we believe that there's freedom for, but homosexuality, we throw our hands up. You got extreme people on the right that are saying, get them out of the churches and stuff like we don't accept you here and then you got extreme people on the left saying come in and homosexuality's fine don't worry about it you're born that way you can't control your desires you can't control uh, your biology it's been shown that it's not biological it is completely proven it's not genetic a hundred percent the studies completely show that's not genetic and I would encourage you to look into that on your own because that's not where this video's going. Homosexuality is a sin that will send you to hell. So when I tell people that there is freedom for homosexuals and that accepting it is not causing there to be less suicides and stuff like this, it's because I want to see more souls saved. And I do think it would be better if we were to legislate differently because and, but the church has to step up too. It can't just be, can't just be legislative.
because you can't really legislate morality. But as we make things accept it, more accept it, then it becomes easier to go down that road. And the real truth of it is that the homosexual, the whole homosexual agenda from the kingdom of darkness perspective, from the perspective of Satan, is to, again, war against the family, is to destroy the family, is to bring people into homes with two fathers and two mothers instead of a mother and a father. You know, it's set up this way for a reason. And children who are raised in homes by two homosexuals are more likely to be homosexuals themselves. Which even more shows that it's a choice. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because it gets turned into a social issue when it's a spiritual issue. It gets turned into a us versus them when it's when both sides completely have the battle wrong and Satan is loving it. Satan is loving that the left is completely accepting homosexuality and that the right is completely blasting these people with hate because both actions are grieving God. It's heartbreaking. So that's the true agenda of homosexuality. It's, a, it's to war against the family, it's to break down the family. But at the same time, God is moving. God is on the move. I prophesy that the Lord is bringing restoration. The Lord is restoring families. The Lord is restoring hope. The Lord is restoring morality. The Lord is restoring truth. And the Lord is exposing the darkness. The Lord is going to overturn so many of the demonic legislation that has gone through. And we're going to see it happen. Since the recording of this video in 2017, we've already seen all of this happening. Thank God for this administration. Trump is clearly anointed by God. If you don't believe that, you have to talk to the Lord about it because you're not going to believe it just because I said it. And uh, God will tell you. God will tell you that he is anointed and the Lord brought him into this position. The Lord did not baptize him in the Holy Spirit until he got into office. I'm not sure if he's been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet. I haven't talked to God about that. I do know the Lord was waiting until Trump got into office to baptize him in the Holy Spirit because he had to pull a fast one on the American people. People are gonna complain that he's not godly enough, but at the same time, you could throw a, a true saint up there and nobody's gonna vote for them. So, you know, America's not ready for a true saint. We have Trump, thank God we have Trump, and he's going to do enough. And you know, I think Trump is very aware of the wars that are going on through the media, through entertainment, through pop culture. And thank God for that because he has the voice and he has the trumpet to be able to blow some of this stuff back and wake people up to the lies and expose the works of darkness of the enemy. So it's a great thing. It's a really great thing. We should be grateful. We need to be grateful. This war is just, is it's still raging, you know, it has not yet been won. God still has plenty of good he wants to do or else he would have come back and gotten us already. Don't lose hope. You need to be aware of what the enemy is up to, but you absolutely do not need to be focused on what the enemy is up to. One of the reasons why I made this video is to encourage you to turn off the television, turn off the news, get focused on the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, get into the word, seek God's voice, seek God's moment by moment plan for your life. He will have everything you need from your entertainment to your rest, to your joy, to your peace, to your love, to your patience, to your goodness, to your kindness to your self-control, to your faith. All things good come from the moment by moment surrender. Not that he won't get those things to you if you're not seeking his moment by moment will, but I live the type of lifestyle that where if I ask God to restore my joy, it is restored within hours. It is restored within hours, if not even minutes, because I then go and seek his will and he, he knows exactly what I need to restore my joy. Prayers like those should always be answered very quickly. If they're not, it's an indication that you're not following God's will, specific, specific will for your life. You might be walking biblically sound, at least to the best of your ability, but if you're not letting him get into the nitty gritty details, then you're not letting him bring you 
uh, these the nitty gritty details into your life and be able to restore your joy like that just in a moment or your peace like j just in a moment and you know I'm talking a moment to to a few hours I'll all of a sudden realize wow look my joy is being completely re restored thank you Lord all I did was follow you and it's just amazing how how he works he's he is the best and I praise him for that there's nothing better than his moment-by-moment -moment plan. The more you get into the details of his moment-by-moment -moment plan, the less the stuff of the world gratifies, the more you can see the truth of the stuff of the world because your conscience will be more pure. Uh, the sort of stuff that they're trying to slide by in the media and through entertainment, it is going to affect you, honestly, but you're gonna realize that it's affecting you and you're gonna have more reason to turn up turn it off and turn away from it and seek God for everything it sounds difficult but it's not it's not difficult it's not difficult it's just a choice it's a choice to start now it's a choice to be done with yourself and and to do your best and you know if you decide to start today and maybe you spend the next hour really in communication with God and then uh, the next few hours you just completely get back into old habits and you're just surfing the web like mindlessly on your own or whatever and then you realize it boom at that moment realize oh I stop seeking the Lord and then just immediately start seeking the Lord again what you're doing is building a new habit you don't need to condemn yourself you don't need to turn it into this big religious thing uh, because it's not, it's about a relationship, it's about communication, it's about surrender, it's about laying down your life so he can give you the life that he designed for you before he laid the foundations of the earth. And you know, it, when we follow God, he promises to bring us the desires of our heart. And the true, deepest, most real desires of our heart are from him. So you could actually be at a point where if you're so far away from the Lord or the Lord's plan that you think you have completely different desires than you really truly deeply do either way doesn't really matter because as you follow him he will be changing your desires if they need to be changed and you'll be aligning with him he'll show you desires that you had that you didn't even realize that you had that are going to be extremely deep same things happen to me and the deepest deepest stuff like the type of stuff that you desired when you were a very young kid when your conscience was pure and you were pure more pure i should say uh that's the type of stuff that he's going to bring to you and that is going to truly satisfy you because that's going to be uh resonating in your true being in your true self and your in your soul and your true soul and, and spirit so consider this think about this god loves you all very much god bless you all in jesus mighty name have a wonderful day uh don't get discouraged don't be discouraged be encouraged just start seeking just start seeking have hope have hope have joy don't let the enemy get into your life and don't allow the enemy into your life start being aware of where the enemy is trying to come in uh, you know and I, I I pray that the Lord raises up more people to bring us true godly entertainment uh, there is a website called pure, pure flicks which has some really great content uh, that God's people making movies and TV shows I would recommend, you know, that's a $10 a month subscription. You could literally t cancel your TV and have all the entertainment you need and it's going to be good and wholesome. And I mean, the type of stuff where you come away edified and inspired and just on fire for the Lord and ready to go out and win souls, ready to be engaged in this spiritual war. That's the type of stuff we need. Uh, I'll try to, Remember to link that in the description below. And if not, pureflix.com, I think it is, .net something. Google Pureflix, you'll, you'll find it. I think that's all I have to say on this subject. I thank you all for your time. And uh, please consider supporting this ministry. Uh, I can, the more support I get, the more time I can put into this and the more quality videos I can make. Uh, 
So yeah. And I promise that every dollar that is donated will be spent in accordance to God's will to the best of my ability and discernment. I really pray about everything and I really pray and I'm confirming and, and double checking and, and stuff when it comes to financial decisions because it's his and it's a gift from him. All Everything good is a gift from him and that's, yeah, that's all from him. So I want to make sure that he gets it spent the way he wants it spent. So, uh, yeah. Thank you all for watching. God bless you all. I ask that he will restore the joy of your salvation if you're not currently there. I ask that he brings you all that you need and desire and that you will have the faith and the trust to get into the nitty details, the nitty gritty details of his plan and to see how really truly amazing and good it is and what a life changing decision that will be for you and you won't want to turn back. You won't want to turn back if you really dive into this. I mean, really like give it a good go for, I don't know, let's say a year. Let's say a year. Because that first uh, amount of time, you're going to have to learn how to really discern his voice. And then uh, he'll still work very powerfully and do amazing things, even if you're missing most of the promptings. What's important is that you are doing your best to seek him. The other thing you can do is uh, test the spirits, ask the spirit that brought you the revelation to confirm that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. The demonic will never confirm that and never say that. So it's a way to test the spirits and then you just have to quiet your mind and make sure that it's not your own voice and that you're not trying to convince yourself and have the patience to be willing to rediscern and rediscern and rediscern and rediscern and, and, and until you uh, get it right and not just convince yourself, oh, okay, he, he confirmed it because you're getting weary of, <laughs> of uh, confirming it. So anyways, I'm here if you need me. Links below if you need to get in contact with me. Uh, please subscribe. Links below if you want to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, any of that good stuff. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Peace.